Thank you for the introduction. Let me present constructing human motion manifold with sequential networks. The purpose of this paper is present a novel recurrent neural network based method to construct a latent motion manifold and to produce various human motions from the motion manifold. Researchers have developed several methods to construct motion manifold to generate natural human motions. Chai apply local PCA to produce a motion manifold that includes a certain range of human motion and apply it for synthesized movements from low dimensional inputs such as position of ND effectors. Taylor proposed a modified restricted proton motion that is able to deal with the temporal coherence of the motion data. Recently, with the development of deep learning technology, a method of constructing a motion manifold by using convolution and neural network based encoder was introduced by the holding. But because their motion manifold cannot know the prior, it is impossible to control in the latent space. Our network structure is similar with Martinez. This paper introduced a novel sequence to sequence encoder decoder model that predicts human motion given a short duration of the past motion. However, the basic sequence to sequence model can only predict short motions and has a limitation in predicting non trivial motor motions. Our method contributes to overcoming these limitations by allowing for controlling on motion manifold space and also long-term motion generation. Our model has four main contributions. First, our model is characterized by the combination of one encoder and two decoders. Given a motion manifold vector, one decoder learns to generate the joint rotation while the other one learns to output joint rotation velocities. Second, unlike previous studies that there is only either joint angles or joint positions, our model considers both the joint rotation and positions in the motion reconstruction. Third, we introduce several loss functions, each of which contributes to enhancing the quality of motion manifold in different aspects. Lastly, based on these technical contributions, our method allows for various practical applications such as random generation, motion interpolation, motion denoising, and motion analogy. Before the introducing the motion manifold structure, let's define motion presentation and notation. A motion with the time range of t2, t plus delta t minus 1 is written as large qt, where small qt denotes the pose at time t. A pose is represented with the set of joint angles written in the exponential coordinate. See the right see the figure in the right? The yellow line indicates the three components of the exponential coordinates and n joint is the number of joints. Lastly, small pt is the pose represented with the joint position at time t corresponding to qt. The following is the overview of our motion manifold networks. Our model has a sequence-to-sequence -sequence structure with an objective to minimize the difference between the ground truth motion space distribution and the reconstructed motion space distribution extracted from the latent motion manifold. See the figure, our model includes the combination of one encoder and two decoders with regularizer. The encoder takes the source motion as an input and maps it to the latent motion space. The two decoders are designed to map the latent space to joint angles and joint velocity respectively. Lastly, the regularizer increases the encoded motion distribution to approximate some prior distribution. Now let's look at how encoder maps input motion sequence into latent motion space. This figure shows the unlearned schematic diagram of the encoder. The encoder consists of dual U cells and one linear layer. 
A certain duration of motion is input to the GRU sequentially. The GRU cell includes the current frame while being conditioned by pre previous frames with their hidden representation. Specifically, the pose QI in the i frame is encoded as follows. Where HI is the hidden state at the frame I and the W encoder is the train parameters. After the final pose of the input motion is read, one linear layer receives the last hidden state, is t plus delta t minus 1, and compressed it to produce a motion manifold called jet. Now the inquiry mapping is completed. Until now, let me introduce our decoder model. Our decoder model consists of two kinds. One decoder learns the joint rotation, and the other one learns joint rotation and velocity. Both decoders are based on dual users, while the connection structure of the two are different. Unlike the rotation decoder, the velocity decoder has the residual connection between the input and the output to construct joint rotation. The decoders are trained simultaneously with the backpropagation. Now, let's see the structure of a joint rotation decoder in the figure on top. This figure shows the unfolded schematic diagram of the joint rotation decoder. Our decoder reconstructs the motion in the reverse order of the input sequence. Reversing the target sequence has an advantage in continuous transition of hidden space vectors from the encoder to decoders. Now, let's look at how motion generated from the motion manifold space through the decoder. It first transforms an element of the motion manifold called Z to a hidden space vector with a linear layer. Then, conditioned by the hidden space vector represented in the future frames, the gel and uh, linear layer outputs the reconstructed pose at the i-th frame given its next pose. W decoder is the learning parameter of the gel and the W gerr is the parameter of the linear layer. Unlike the encoder, the decoder uses the constructed result of the previous frame as the input instead of the ground truth to make the network more robust to noise. Reconstructed pose at the time, I frame is used to calculate position through the FK layer. After the last pose generated, the joint decoder mapping is completed. Next, let me explain the joint velocity decoder. The joint velocity decoder has a similar structure to the joint rotation decoder. The main difference is that is the laser connection to generate the next pose at frame i. This laser network learns the difference between the current frame pose and the previous frame pose. Therefore, the model predicts the angle difference or velocity and interprets it over time. After the last pose is generated, the joint velocity color mapping is also completed. Until now, we have a look the decoder structure, so let's see why we choose the dual decoder. Each decoder has the following pros and cons. First, the rotation decoder shows the strength when reconstructing long term motions because it learns joint angle itself. However, it may cause pose discontinuity between frames. The velocity decoder has the advantage of reconstructing continuous human motion as it outputs difference between consecutive rotations, which is usually smaller and easier to learn. However, training velocity tends to be unstable in a long term sequence because the longer the motion is, the more error is accumulated. Therefore, we combine the joint rotation decoder and the joint velocity decoder. By combining the two decoders, we can alleviate the limitation of individual decoder models as we explained earlier. As our two decoders have contrasting strengths and weakness, when combined they complete each other in synergy. 
Lastly, let me explain the manifold regularizer that includes the encoded motion distribution to approximate some prior distribution. We adopt the Wasserstein regularizer for matching the distribution of the motion manifold to desired prior distribution PZ. In our case, we use multivariate normal distribution. Unlike the variation of the encoder, the sequential networks trained with the Wasserstein regularizer allows the non-random encoders to deterministically map inputs to latent codes, and thus it helps rendering sample or interpolate points in the motion manifold correspondent to plausible motions. Now, let's see the training process of the motion manifold. We model a number of loss functions each of which contributes to enhancing the quality of a motion generated from motion manifold from different perspectives. First, to reduce the construction loads, we employ two kinds of loads functions, motion reconstruction loads and manifold reconstruction loads. Motion reconstruction loads at R that increase a motion to be reconstructed after going through the encoder and decoder and manifold reconstruction loads LM that helps the latent vector to be reconstructed after going through the decoder and encoder. Second, we include Wasserstein loads that penalize the discrepancy between PZ and the distribution EZ included by the encoder. Lastly, we can include an adversarial loads LG to achieve more natural motions from motion manifold. Then, let's see the motion reconstruction loads in detail first. Yellow arrows indicate the data used for the motion reconstruction loads term. The motion reconstruction loads penalize the difference between the motion and the reconstruction motion, which is obtained by encoding the motion followed by decoding. Specifically, we measure the discrepancy of both joint rotation angle Q and the joint position P. Another reconstruction loads is the manifold reconstruction loads. A latent code sampled from the latent distribution should be reconstructed after decoding and encoding. Manifold reconstruction loads increase this mapping between the motion and the manifold space. Second loads term is Wasserstein regularizer loads. In order to make the manifold space have a particular desired prior distribution so that we can efficiently sample from the distribution, we use the Wasserstein regularizer that penalizes deviation of the distribution EZ and the latent manifold from the desired prior distribution PZ where the PZ is the model that has the multivariate and multi distribution in our model. We use maximum mean discrepancy to measure the divergence between two distributions with the inverse of multi-quadratic corner. Please see in detail in the paper. Lastly, <coughs> we employ the this last scarce generated adversarial network LSCAN to promote the motion generated by our model to be indistinct distinguishable from real motion. Where the discriminator D tries to distinguish between the reconstructed motions and the real motions. Therefore the total objective loss function of the main motion manifold network is follows. We jointly train the encoder, joint rotation decoder, joint velocity decoder, and the discriminator to optimize the total objective function. We trained and test our method with H3.6M dataset. Every motion in the dataset has the same skeletal structure with seven joints. Our motion clips for training is 150 frames with frame rate 25 Hz. It's about 6 seconds. Our pose is 
are represented with the position and orientation of the loop and the joint rotation expressed with the exponential coordinates. Loop position in the transverse plane is the remote. Now, let me show you the results. First of all, we visualize the reconstruction result with our model red character over time in comparison with the ground truth green character and basic sequence to sequence model yellow character. While the basic sequence to sequence model converts to mean pose in long term motion reconstruction, our model works well. To verify whether the latent motion manifold can cr create meaningful motions, we randomly sampled 30 latent vectors and decoded it to obtain motions. One can see that our method can create various actions including sitting, crossing the legs, and resting the world. This result suggests that our motion manifold and decoder can create a wide range of plausible behaviors. We also experiment on the denoising capability of our method. We generate noise corrupted motion by randomly setting joint angles to zero and then project it to the latent motion manifold and decoding the motion manifold to vector to obtain a reconstructed motion. This video shows the denoise results of red character, which are quite similar to the ground truth motions. Next experiment is motion analysis. From this experiment, we can understand how our model organized motion manifold to represent the feature of directions. We perform vector algebraic operations with the latent vectors encoded from different motion and explore how the model organized the latent space to represent motions. Green characters are the ground truth data set Bright orange and pink characters are generated from algebraic operation on the latent space from our model. One can see that the motion manifold obtained with our model support analog well. However, the dark orange and pink characters from Holden's model doesn't work. Lastly, we experiment motion interpolation with latent motion manifold. We interpolate two different motions by encoding them into the latent motion manifold and then perform a linear interpolation between the encoded motion manifold vectors. The resulting interpolate motion created by our method on the bottom line is not just frame-by-frame -frame interpolation, but may contain meaningful transition between input motions. We also compares our model with Holden's model. On the top line, our model shows a natural transition between two motions while Holden's model creates a somewhat average motion between two motions. In this paper, we presented a novel sequential network for constructing a latent motion manifold for modeling human motion. The main contribution of our method are first, the combined decoder for the joint rotation and joint velocity. Second, considering both joint rotation and positions by adding the FK layer in both decoders, which improved the construction accuracy. Lastly, we compose a set of load functions, each of which contribute to enhancing the quality of motions. Our method have several limitations in the following aspects. First, as a first, 
as a consequence framework, the performance of our model degrees if trained to produce motion longer than 10 seconds. As you see in the video, resulting motion tends to be low details. This limitation may be elevated by employing the attention mechanism. The second, the encoded motion tends to be smoothed in the process of matching the latent motion manifold to the prior dis distribution through the regularizer. For example, motions that contain frequent hand shaking, such as walking stuff or discussion motions, lose fine details when reconstruction. This limitation presents interesting topics for the future motion. Thank you for listening to my presentation.